Patients are scheduled for surgery the day before and lists are prepared. From these lists the receptionist prepares a sending and collecting slip for each patient. When a patient is needed, the receptionist, after checking the sending slip and list details are correct, calls the porter and tells them that a patient is needed for collection. When the porters arrive, they are given the collection slip for that patient. While the porters are collecting the patient, the scrubbed person and circulating nurse prepare the theatre. They all wear face masks which are usually found outside the entry to the theatre. The scrub person then starts to wash their hands. It is important that this task is performed properly and should last for a minimum of three minutes. The operating department assistant prepares the anaesthetic room, checks the laryngoscopes, and tests the endotracheal tube. The scrub person finishes her scrubbing up. And dries her hand using the sterile towels provided. She then proceeds to open her sterile gown pack. The ODA draws up the drugs required by the anaesthetist. Different patients require different drugs. Drugs needed for anaesthesia are stored in the anaesthetic room. These could be either scheduled or non-scheduled drugs. The scrub person now gowns and gloves. Then she goes to the layup room to prepare her trolley. When the patient arrives, the receptionist greets the patient by name and checks him in whilst the ward nurse waits. Each patient arrives with a checklist. The checklist itemises each check, such as the date of birth, and she also checks that the consent form is signed.
was the last time Daddy and Nikki were doing uh, breakfast on this one? You don't have to have any end of home, do you? No. Why do you read it? The scrub person prepares her trolley, laying out her instruments from the casket. She checks that the correct number of instruments are present. She receives all her disposable items from her circulating nurse. The ODA has selected an appropriate face mask and connects it to the circuit. He then checks that the vaporizers are full. He also checks the suction. The scrub person finishes preparing her trolley. The ODA, having finished his preparation, is now ready to collect the patient from reception. When the ODA arrives in reception, he checks with the receptionist, which is his patient. Again, all preliminary checks are made and then the patient is taken to the anaesthetic room. The anaesthetist or ODA talks to the patient to try to make them feel more at ease and relaxed. The ODA places the ECG electrodes on the patient's chest. The anaesthetist then takes the patient's blood pressure.
It's going to drift you off to sleep with this needle in the back of your hand. As the patient loses his senses, it's important to remember that the last sense to go is hearing, which becomes more acute. I'd like to do a swab count, please. Okay. One of the duties of the circulating nurse is to count the swabs and needles with the scrub person. Swabs are packed in bundles of five. Medium tape swabs. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And one. Swabs and needles are written on the board at the back of the theatre. Swabs are written up in groups of five, for example five plus five, and needles are written up singularly. The patient is now moved into the main theatre. and lifted onto the operating table. He is then connected to the anaesthetic machine and other life support monitors such as the blood pressure monitor and the ECG machine. The circulating nurse prepares the patient by moving the gown from the operative area. Soft heel pads are placed under the patient's heels. This is to prevent deep vein thrombosis forming in the calf muscles and also to prevent pressure areas occurring. A diathermy pad is attached to the patient's thigh. The patient's notes and x-rays accompany them to theatre. It is important to remember that while we have these notes in our possession, the patient is still entitled to confidentiality. Once the scrub person is satisfied with the checks and that the patient has been positioned safely, the preparation of the skin is commenced.
Once the skin has been painted with the prep, the drapes are then put into position. This leaves an exposed window through which the surgeon will operate. The surgeon is called to theatre so that he may start to wash, gown and glove. While waiting for the surgeon, the trolleys are put into place, thus making our sterile field which we explained earlier. When the suction and diathermy have been connected and switched on, the operation is ready to commence. The surgeon will ask the anaesthetist his permission to start the operation. Whilst the operation is in progress, the anaesthetist keeps careful observations of the patient's condition. He records this on an anaesthetic chart, which is in the patient's notes. He also puts what type of anaesthetic the patient has had and the amount of drugs used. He writes any special instructions to the nurses in a box at the bottom of the chart. Whilst working in theatre you may find difficulty with personal communication 
particularly with hearing what people say. This is because of the hat and mask you are wearing. You will be surprised at how quickly you become accustomed to this. There are normally three swab counts made towards the end of the operation. The last swab check is on the skin closure. If the nurse is satisfied with the check, she asks the anaesthetist's permission for the swabs to be removed from the swab rack. These are then taken down and thrown away in the yellow bags. When the surgeon has completed his wound closure, the scrub person cleans the area and applies the dressing. The drapes are removed and put into a clear linen bag. The surgeon writes the operating procedure in the notes and details of any findings. The notes are then put back on the trolley with the patient. The circulating nurse starts to tidy away the instruments into the hatch. She also cleans the furniture before returning it to the layup room. The surgeon signs the register book. The anaesthetist now brings the patient out of his sleep by reversing the anaesthetic. He extubates the patient. The patient is then transferred back to their trolley. The scrub person accompanies the patient with the anaesthetist to the recovery bay. The recovery nurse receives the patient and the scrub person hands him over explaining what procedure the patient has had. She also tells the recovery nurse if there are any drains.
This concludes our introduction to theatre. We hope your placement here will be a happy one. Welcome to theatre. Right. 